Hi guys, it's Mr. Widmeyer here, and we are um, restarting our polynomials unit. Well, not really restarting it. We're going to jump back into where, from where we ended, which was um, um, dividing polynomials. Okay, um, we'll do a little bit of review of the previous lesson, which was long division. Um, but I'm going to show you that promised uh, synthetic division first. Okay, so remember we've already graphed polynomials, we graphed cubics, we added, subtracted, and multiplied polynomials. We did a little division with long division, and I'm going to show you a shortcut with with synthetic division, along with some um, review of um, long division too. Okay, so let's see here if I can get this to move for me. Looks like it's not. All right, well, we'll just do this anyway. Um, so, <clears throat> like I said, synthetic division. And I'll also show you how we're going to use this to also evaluate functions too. All right, so um, first thing to note here, okay, we can only do synthetic division only works um, when dividing a polynomial by x minus k. Okay, so whatever we're dividing by has to be in that form x minus k right there. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see an example here. So let's say we were asked to divide f of x equal to x to the third plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 by x minus 2, that factor. Okay, so I'll show you synthetic division second. First, I will do our normal long division way that we did back on the Friday before break. For those of you that weren't maybe there or, you know, it's been a while since, you know, we've seen this. So anyway, long division, here we go. <clears throat> okay, what does long division look like, right? Well, we are dividing by the x minus two. So we put that x minus two out front. We draw that little boxy thing, okay? And then we put our polynomial there that we are dividing the dividend inside like so okay and remember to do long division we kind of start with our lead term here and our lead term here and we ask you know what times the x will get us the x cubed here okay right so we want to get an x cubed so what will that be you know what times the x will get us the x cubed well that's x squared right so we'll put an x squared here x squared times x will give us x to the third. x squared times minus 2, because that x squared also has to multiply that with that minus 2 right there. So we'll subtract the 2x squared as well. And then remember, for long division, you subtract that quantity. Okay? And again, I don't like doing subtraction, right? So I'm going to change this all to add the opposites. So x cubed plus negative x cubed gives us 0, so they cancel. 5 plus a 2 makes 7x squared. And we bring down the minus 7x. You don't have to draw this arrow if you don't want to, but I do just because, you know, it's just for you guys to highlight and see it there, <clears throat> what's happening. All right, same question now. We're going to ask what times the x will give us 7x squared here. Okay. So that'll be a 7x, right? So we'll put plus 7x. 7 times 1 will give us a 7. x times x will give us x squared. And then 7 also multiplies with that 2, that minus 2 there as well. It distributes, right? So we'll get a minus 14x. And again, we'll subtract that quantity. Okay? Again, I don't like subtracting. So I'm going to add the opposites. So 7 and negative 7 cancel. Negative 7 and 14 makes 7x. Okay, let me bring down this plus 2 here. All right, and then we need to, one more time, think about what times the x will give us 7x. So that'll be a 7, right? So plus 7. 7 times x will give us 7x. 7 times minus 2, minus 14. And again, we subtract the quantity. Okay, but instead of subtracting, we will add the opposites. 
right? 7 and negative 7 cancel, 2 and 14 make 16. Okay, so now we have nothing here that we can multiply x by to get 16. Nothing nice at least, right? So we're kind of stuck. All right, what this number is then is this is our remainder. Since we have remainder, does that mean our um, polynomial divides evenly? Does that mean our polynomial here divides evenly by the x minus 2? Well, since the remainder is 16, it's not 0, right? That means it does not divide evenly. Okay, so what do we do with the remainder? Well, you can put like remainder 16, but that's not super helpful. What we're going to do instead is we'll just add the remainder on. We'll add the 16 over the x minus 2, since it's still that part still has to be divided. The 16 down here still has to be divided by the x minus 2. Okay, and so there's our final answer. <clears throat> now, compare that with synthetic division. Okay, so now the good news about long division, it will always work. We can see that it takes a lot more work over here, right? You can see that it's just, this is a lot of work right there, okay? Synthetic division, like we said up here, <clears throat> only works, synthetic division only works when dividing a polynomial by x minus k. So, <clears throat> are we dividing by x minus k? Yes, we're dividing by x minus 2, so that would make our k 2. Okay, the k is 2. So, what's that going to look like? How do we do long division here? Well, for, long, or for synthetic division, sorry. So, synthetic division, we're going to take that k, which is 2, put it in a little box here. We're going to take all of the coefficients... Okay, the coefficients of our polynomial. So this coefficient, this coefficient, this coefficient, this coefficient. Okay, now you'll notice over here, I circled a coefficient and there's no number there, but what number can we put in there? And you write, it's a one. Okay, and then we have the five. Then we have the negative seven. And then we have the positive two. Okay, now if we had a term missing up here, we would need to put a zero in as a placeholder. And I'll show you an example of that later, but we'll just stick with this for right now. Okay, leave a line of space. This should be one line of space right there. And then draw a line, okay, kind of like you would for an addition problem or something like that. And here's how we're gonna do synthetic division, okay? We're gonna bring this one down to start things out, and then we'll multiply. <clears throat> one, whoops, let me do it this way. We'll do one times this two here, which gives us two, and that'll go right there. And then these two will add together, and we get seven. Okay, and then we start over again. The seven, we'll multiply with the two, and that gives us 14. And then we'll add these two together to get seven. <clears throat> Okay, and then we'll do the same thing. Seven times the two, 14 goes there. Two plus 14, 16. Okay, <clears throat> and what do we see? How do we interpret these results? Well, if you look at these answers, one, one, seven, 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 16, 16. These numbers that we result in here are the coefficients of our answer. Okay, so we started with a cubic. Our answer will then be a quadratic. So we'll start with, we reduce the power by one. So one x squared plus seven x plus seven plus 16 over x minus two. And voila, we've got our answer using synthetic division. All right, let's try another one here. <clears throat> so let's see here. If you feel like you've got the hang of it, once I write this problem out here, let's see. So why don't you guys go ahead and try this one. Pause the video, see if you can actually do the division using synthetic division. 
Okay, hopefully you pause the video. If you didn't pause the video, I would really encourage you to do it um, because you know you want to try and practice this on your own first before you then see my answer. So that way I don't influence you one way or the other. You know, it kind of help you learn the stuff if you try it first. Um, anyway, so in this case, our k is four. Remember, because again, it's x minus k is the format. So this number here, it's like the opposite of that number that you see that goes in the box. And then our lead coefficients. So here, this coefficient's a one. This coefficient's also a one. And this here is a negative 17. Okay, and then we drop it down. So again, start by dropping the one down and the one times the four is four. So it goes right there. And then you add these two together. One and four make five. Okay, then we do five times the four, which makes 20. And then we add the negative 17 and the 20 together to get three. Okay, so we started with a quadratic, so our answer here is going to be a linear. Ooh, so 1x plus 5 plus, and then this 3, that well, this number here will always be our remainder. So 3 over, and then we still have to divide by that x minus 4 there. So that's the remainder of our problem, and there it is. Okay, let's try another one. We'll divide x to the third plus 64 by x plus four. Okay, so again, um, in this case, our k is going to be negative four because again, for x minus k here, this would be require us to have a negative four. Okay, this is like having x minus negative four, that gives us that <coughs> plus four there. So a negative four it would go, is what goes in the box there. We'll put a one for our lead coefficient of one there. We're missing some terms here though, all right? So for example, this is really one x to the third plus zero x squared plus zero x plus 64, and we need these missing terms there. So we're gonna put a one, then a zero, then a zero, then 64 for our coefficients. And we'll do the same thing we did before. Drop the one down, one times negative four is negative four, zero negative four is negative four. Negative four, Oops, there it is. And then we'll do it again. Negative four times negative four is 16. Okay, and then I did it again. Sorry guys, zero plus 16 is 16. Okay. And then one more time, 16 times negative four, negative 64. And you add these together and you get zero. And ooh, that means it divided evenly. So what's our result here? We end up with um, x squared minus four x plus 16, okay, with no remainder. So in other words, x to the third plus 64, sorry, messing, divided by x plus four, okay, is, the same as x to the squared, x to the second minus four x plus 16, okay? Another way you can think about it is that x to the third plus 64 is equal to taking that x plus four and multiplying it with the x squared minus four x plus 16. So it gives us a way to kind of take something here and factor it, okay, as long as we know one of the factors. All right, so I'm going to pause there, give you guys a chance then to work on some homework problems. All right, if you have any questions, please make sure you go to Schoology and um, post your questions in the um, comment of the updates page. So on the updates page, I'll post the assignment, comment on that post if you have additional questions. All right, good luck.